Section two of Comic Tragedies by Louisa May Alcott. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section two Norna, or The Witch's Curse. Part one Characters Count Rodolfo, a haughty noble. Read by Algy Pug. Count Louis lover of lenore adrian the black mask read by matthew reese hugo a bandit read by peter bishop gaspard captain of the guard read by john steigerwald angelo a page read by david lawrence teresa wife to rodolfo read by rashada lenore in love with lewis read by amy graymore norna a witch read by elizabeth clett Scene first. A room in the castle of Rodolfo. Teresa discovered alone and in tears. I cannot pray. My aching heart finds rest alone in tears. Ah, what a wretched fate is mine! Forced by a father's will to wed a stranger ere I learn to love. One short year hath taught me what a bitter thing it is to wear a chain that binds me unto one who hath proved himself both jealous and unkind. The fair hopes I once cherished are now gone, and here a captive in my splendid home I dwell forsaken, sorrowing and alone. <laughs> ah. Three taps upon the wall are heard. My brother signal. What can bring him hither at this hour? Louis, is it thou? Enter. All's well. Enter Count Louis through a secret panel in the wall, hidden by a curtain. He embraces Teresa. Ah, Louis! what hath chanced why art thou here some danger must have brought thee tell me dear brother let me serve thee sister dearest thy kindly offered aid is useless now thou canst not help me and i must add another sorrow to the many that are thine i came to say farewell teresa farewell o oh, brother do not leave me thy love is all now left to cheer my lonely life wherefore must thou go tell me i beseech thee forgive me if i grieve thee i will tell thee all thy husband hates me for i charged him with neglect and cruelty to thee and he hath vowed revenge for my bold words he hath whispered false tales to the king he hath blighted all my hopes of rank and honour i am banished from the land and must leave thee and leonore and wander forth an outcast and alone but let him beware i shall return to take a deep revenge for thy wrongs and my own nay sister grieve not thus i have sworn to free thee from his power and i will keep my vow hope on and bear a little longer dear teresa and ere long i will bear thee to a happy home noise is heard without ha what is that who comes tis my lord returning from the court fly louise fly Thou art lost if he discover thee. Heaven bless and watch above thee. Remember poor Teresa, and farewell. One last word of Leonore. I have never told my love, yet she hath smiled on me, and I should have won her hand. Ah, tell her this, and bid her to be true to him who in his exile will hope on, and yet return to claim the heart he hath loved so faithfully. Farewell, my sister. Despair not. I shall return. Exit Lewis through the secret panel, drops his dagger. Thank heaven he is safe. But, oh, my husband, this last deed of thine is hard to bear. Poor Luis, parted from Lenore, his fair hopes blighted, all by thy cruel hand. Ah, he comes. I must be calm. Enter Rodolfo. What, weeping still? Hast thou no welcome for thy lord, save tears and sighs? I'll send thee to a convent if thou art not more gay. I'll gladly go, my lord. I am weary of the world. Its gaieties but make my heart more sad. Nay, then I will take thee to the court, and there thou must be gay. But I am weary. Bring me wine and smile upon me as thou used to do. Dost hear me? Weep no more. Seats himself. Teresa brings wine and stands beside him. Suddenly he sees the dagger dropped by Louis. Ha! What is that? 
"'Tis none of mine. How came it hither? Answer, I command thee. I cannot. I must not, dare not tell thee. Darest thou refuse to answer? Speak. Who hath dared to venture hither? Is it thy brother? As thou lovest life, I bid thee speak. I am innocent, and will not betray the only one now left me on the earth to love. Oh, pardon me, my lord, I will obey in all but this. Thou shalt obey. I'll take thy life, but I will know. Thy brother must be near. This dagger was not here an hour ago. Thy terror hath betrayed him. I leave thee now to bid them search the castle. But if I find him not, I shall return. And if thou wilt not then confess, I'll find a way to make thee. Remember, I have vowed thy secret or thy life. Exit, Rodolfo. My life I freely yield thee, but my secret never. O oh, Luis, I will gladly die to save thee. Life hath no joy for me, and in the grave this poor heart may forget the bitter sorrows it is burdened with. <laughs> Sinks down weeping. Enter Rodolfo. The search is vain. He hath escaped. Teresa, rise and answer me. To whom belong the dagger I have found? Thy tears avail not. I will be obeyed. Kneel not to me. I will not pardon. Answer, or I'll swear I'll make thee dumb for ever. No, no, I will not betray. O oh, husband, spare me. Let not the hand that led me to the altar be stained with blood I would so gladly shed for thee. I cannot answer thee. Rodolfo, striking her. Then die. Thy constancy is useless. I will find thy brother and take a fearful vengeance yet. I am faithful to the last. Husband, I forgive thee. Teresa dies. Tis done, and I am rid of her for ever. But tis an ugly deed. Poor fool, there was a time when I could pity thee, but thou hast stood twixt me and Lady Lenore, and now... I am free. I must conceal the form, and none shall ever know the crime. Exit, Rodolfo. The panel opens, and Norna enters. Heaven shield us! What is this? His cruel hand hath done the deed, and I am powerless to save. Poor murdered lady, I had hoped to spare thee this, and lead thee to a happier home. Perchance tis better so. The dead find rest, and thy sad heart can ache no more. Rest to thy soul, sweet lady. But for thee, thou cruel villain, I have in store a deep revenge for all thy sinful deeds. If there be power in spell or charm, I'll conjure fearful dreams upon thy head. I'll follow thee wherever thou mayst go, and haunt thy sleep with evil visions. I'll whisper strange words that shall appall thee. Dark phantoms shall rise up before thee, and wild voices ringing in thine ear shall tell thee of thy sins. By all these will I make life like a hideous dream, and death more fearful still. Like a vengeful ghost I will haunt thee to thy grave, and so revenge thy wrongs, poor murdered lady. Beware, Rodolfo! Old Norna's curse is on thee. She bears away Teresa's body through the secret door and vanishes. Curtain. Note to scene second. The mysterious cave was formed of old furniture, covered with dark draperies, an opening being left at the back wherein the spirits called up by Norna might appear. A kitchen kettle filled with steaming water made an effective cauldron over which the sorceress should murmur her incantations. Flaming pine knots cast a lurid glare over the scene, and large boughs, artfully arranged about the stage, gave it the appearance of a gloomy wood. When Lewis retires within, he at once arrays himself in the white robes of the vision, and awaits the witch's call to rise behind the aperture in true dramatic style. He vanishes, quickly resumes his own attire, while Norna continues to weave her spells, till she sees he is ready to appear once more as the disguised Count Lewis. Scene second. A wood. Norna's cave among the rocks. 
Enter Lewis, masked. Yes, tis the spot. How dark and still. She is not here. Ho, Norna, mighty sorceress, I seek thy aid. Norna, rising from the cave. I am here. I seek thee, Norna, to learn tidings of one most dear to me. Dost thou know aught of Count Rodolfo's wife? A strange tale hath reached me that not many nights ago she disappeared, and none know whither she hath gone. Oh, tell me, is this true? It is most true. And canst thou tell me whither she has gone? I will reward thee well. I can. She lies within her tomb, in the chapel of the castle. Dead? It cannot be. They told me she had fled away with some young lord who had won her love. Was it not true? It is false, as the villain's heart who framed the tale. I bore the murdered lady to her tomb and laid her there. Murdered? How? When? By whom? Oh, tell me, I beseech thee. Her husband's cruel hand took the life he had made a burden. I heard him swear it ere he dealt the blow. Wherefore did he kill her? Oh, answer quickly, or I shall go mad with grief and hate. I can tell thee little. From my hiding-place I heard her vow never to confess whose dagger had been found in her apartment, and her jealous lord in his wild anger murdered her. Twas mine. Would it had been sheathed in mine own breast, ere it had caused so dark a deed. Ah, Teresa, why did I leave thee to a fate like this? Young man, grieve not. It is too late to save, but there is left to thee a better thing than grief. Oh, what? Revenge! Thou art right. I'll weep no more. Give me thine aid, O mighty wizard, and I will serve thee well. Who art thou? The poor lady's lover? Ah, no. Far nearer and far deeper was the love I bore her, for I am her brother. Ha! That's well. Thou wilt join me, for I have made a vow to rest not till that proud sinful lord hath well atoned for this deep crime. Spirits shall haunt him, and the darkest phantoms that my art can raise shall scare his soul. Wilt thou join me in my work? I will. But stay, thou hast spoken of spirits. Dread sorceress, is it in thy power to call them up? It is. Wilt see my skill? Stand back while I call up a phantom, which thou canst not doubt. Lewis retires within the cave. Norna weaves a spell above her cauldron. O oh, spirit, from thy quiet tomb, I bid thee hither through the gloom, In winding sheet with bloody brow, Rise up and hear our solemn vow. I bid thee with my magic power Tell the dark secret of that hour, When cruel hands with blood and strife Closed the sad dream of thy young life. Hither, appear before our eyes, Pale spirit, I command thee, rise. Spirit of Teresa rises. Shadowy spirit, I charge thee well, By my mystic art's most potent spell, to haunt throughout his sinful life the mortal who once called thee wife. At midnight hour glide round his bed, and lay thy pale hand on his head. Whisper wild words in his sleeping ear, and chill his heart with a deadly fear. Rise at his side in his gayest hour, and his guilty soul shall feel thy power. Stand thou before him in day and night, and cast o'er his life a darksome blight. For with all his power and sin and pride, he shall ne'er forget his murdered bride. Pale shadowy form, wilt thou obey? The spirit bows its head. To thy ghostly work, away, away. The spirit vanishes. The spell is o'er, the vow is won, and sinful heart thy curse begun. Re-enter Lewis. Tis enough. I own thy power. And by the spirit of my murdered sister I have looked upon, I swear to aid thee in thy dark work. Tis well, and I will use my power to guard thee from the danger that surrounds thee. And now farewell. Remember, 
thou hast sworn. Exit, Lewis. Curtain. Scene third. Another part of the wood. Enter Rodolfo. They told me that old Norna's cave was among these rocks, and yet I find it not. By her I hope to learn where young Count Louis is concealed. Once in my power, he shall not escape to whisper tales of evil deeds against me. Stay, someone comes. I'll ask my way. Enter Louis, masked. Ho, oh, good sir, canst guide me to the cell of Norna, the old sorceress? It were little use to tell thee. Thou wouldst only win a deeper curse than that she hath already laid upon thee. Hold! Who art thou that dare to speak thus to Count Rodolfo? That thou canst never know, but this I tell thee. I am thy deadliest foe, and, aided by the wizard Norna, seek to work thee evil, and bring down upon thy head the fearful doom thy sin deserves. Wouldst thou know more? Then seek the witch, and learn the hate she bears thee. Fool! Think'st thou I fear thee or thy enchantments? Draw and defend thyself. Thou shalt pay dearly for thine insolence to me. Insolence to me! Draws his sword. I will not stain my weapon with a murderer's blood. I leave thee to the fate that gathers round thee. Exit, Lewis. Murderer, said he, I am betrayed. Yet no one saw the deed. Yet stay. Perchance t'was he who bore Teresa away. He has escaped me, and will spread the tale. Nay, why should I fear? Courage! One blow, and I am safe. Rushes forward. Spirit of Teresa rises. What's that? Her death-like face. The wound my hand hath made. Help! 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 Rushes out. The spirit vanishes. Curtain. Scene fourth. Room in the castle of Rodolfo. Rodolfo alone. I see no way save that. Were young Count Louis dead, she would forget the love that had just begun. And by sweet words and gifts I may yet win her. The young lord must die. A groan behind the curtain. Ha! Ah, what is that? Tis nothing. Fie upon my fear. I'll banish all remembrance of the fearful shape my fancy conjured up within the forest. I'll not do the deed myself. I have had enough of blood. Hugo the bandit, he is just the man, bold, sure of hand, and secret. I will bribe him well, and when the deed is done, find means to rid me of him, lest he should play me false. I saw him in the courtyard as I entered. Perchance he is not yet gone. Ho, oh, without there! Bid Hugo here if he be within the castle. He is a rough knave, but gold will make all sure. Enter Hugo. What would my lord with me? I ask a favour of thee. Nay, never fear, I'll pay thee well. Wouldst earn a few gold pieces? Ay, my lord, most gladly would I. Nay, sit, good Hugo. Here is wine. Drink and refresh thyself. Thanks, my lord. How can I serve you? Rodolfo gives wine. Hugo sits and drinks. Dost thou know Count Louis, whom the king lately banished? Nay, my lord, I never saw him. Aside. Ah, that is well. It matters not. It is not of him I speak. Take more wine, good Hugo. Listen, there is a certain lord. One whom I hate, I seek his life. Here is gold. Thou hast a dagger, and can use it well. Dost understand me? Ay, my lord, most clearly. Name the place and hour, count out the gold. I and my dagger then are thine. Tis well. Now hearken. In the forest, near old Norna's cave, there is a quiet spot. Do thou go there to-night at sunset? Watch well, and when thou seest the tall figure wrapped in a dark cloak and masked, Spring forth and do the deed, then fling the body down the rocks, or hide it in some secret place. Here is one half the gold. More shall be thine when thou shalt show some token that the deed is done. Thanks, Count. I'll do thy bidding. At sunset in the forest, I'll be there and see he leaves it not alive. Good even, then, my lord. Hugo, use well thy dagger, and gold awaits thee. Yet stay. I'll meet thee in the wood, and pay thee there. 
they might suspect if they should see thee here again so soon i'll meet thee there and so farewell adieu my lord exit hugo yes all goes well my rival dead and leonora is mine with her i may forget the pale face that now seems ever looking into mine i can almost think the deep wound shows in her picture yonder but this is folly shame on thee rodolfo i'll think of it no more turns to drink teresa's face appears within the picture the wound upon her brow ah what is that am i going mad see the eyes move it is teresa's face nay i will not look again yes yes tis there will this sad face haunt me for ever for ever for ever fiends take me tis her voice it is no dream ah let me go away away rodolfo rushes wildly out curtain note to scene fifth the apparently impossible transformations of this scene when played by two actors only may be thus explained the costumes of lewis and norna being merely loose garments afford opportunities for rapid change and the indulgent audience overlooking such minor matters as boots and wigs it became an easy matter for jo to transform herself into either of the four characters which she assumed on this occasion beneath the flowing robes of the sorceress jo was fully dressed as count rodolfo laid conveniently near were the black cloak hat and mask of lewis also the white draperies required for the ghostly teresa thus norna appears in long gray robe to which are attached the hood and elf locks of the witch seeing hugo approach she conceals herself among the trees thus gaining time to don the costume of lewis and appear to hugo who awaits him hugo stabs and drags him from the stage lewis then throws off his disguise and becomes rodolfo fully dressed for his entrance a moment later as hugo does not again appear it is an easy matter to assume the character of the spectre and produce the sights and sounds which terrify the guilty count then slipping on the witch's robe be ready to glide forth and close the scene with dramatic effect scene fifth the wood near norna's cave enter norna it is the hour i bid him come with the letter for lady leonore poor youth his sister slain his life in danger and the lady of his love far from him tis a bitter fate but if old norna loses not her power he shall yet win his liberty his love and his revenge ah he comes nay tis the ruffian hugo i will conceal myself some evil is afoot hides among the trees enter hugo this is the spot here will i hide and bide my time conceals himself among the rocks enter lewis she is not here i'll wait a while and think of leonore how will she receive this letter ah could she know how mid all my grief and danger her dear face shines in my heart and cheers me on hugo steals out and as he turns stabs him ha villain thou hast killed me i am dying god bless thee leonore norna remember vengeance on rodolfo falls nay nay thou wilt take no revenge thy days are ended thanks to this good steel now for the token takes letter from lewis's hand ah this he cannot doubt i will take this ring too tis a costly one i'll hide the body in the thicket yonder ere my lord arrives drags out the body enter rodolfo not here can he have failed here is blood it may be his i'll call hugo good hugo art thou there hugo stealing from the trees ay my lord i am here all is safely done the lovesick boy lies yonder in the thicket dead as steel can make him and here is the token if you doubt me and the ring i just took from his hand gives letter nay nay i do not doubt thee keep thou the ring i am content with this tell me did he struggle with thee when thou dealt the blow nay my lord he fell without a groan and murmuring something of revenge on thee he died hast thou the gold yes yes i have it take it 
and remember i can take thy life as easily as thou hast his if thou shouldst whisper what hath this day been done now go i have done with thee and i with thee adieu my lord exit hugo now am i safe no mortal knows of theresa's death by my hand and leonora is mine voice within the wood curses on me am i bewitched surely i heard a voice perchance twas but an echo a wild laugh rings through the trees fiends take the wood i'll stay no longer turns to fly teresa's spirit rises tis there help help rushes wildly out enter norna ha ha fiend shall haunt thee thou murderer another sin upon thy soul another life to be avenged poor murdered youth now gone to join thy sister i will lay thee by her side and then to my work he hath raised another ghost to haunt him let him beware exit norna curtain scene sixth chamber in the castle of lady lenore enter lenore ah how wearily the days go by no tidings of count louis and count rodolpho urges on his suit so earnestly i must accept his hand to-day or refuse his love and think no more of louis i know not how to choose rodolpho loves me i am an orphan and alone and in his lovely home i may be happy i have heard it whispered that he is both stern and cruel yet methinks it cannot be he is so tender with me ah would i could forget count louis he hath never told his love and doubtless thinks no more of her who treasures up his gentle words and cannot banish them even when another offers a heart and home few would refuse how shall i answer count rodolpho when he comes i do not love him as i should and yet were it no hard task to learn with so fond a teacher shall i accept his love or shall i reject norna suddenly appears reject what art thou leave me or i call for aid nay lady fear not i come not here to harm thee but to save thee from a fate far worse than death i am old norna of the forest and though they call me witch and sorceress i am a woman yet and with a heart to pity and to love i would save thy youth and beauty from the blight i fear will fall upon thee save me from what how knowest that i am in danger and from what wouldst thou save me norna from lord rodolpho lady ah and why from him tell on i'll listen to thee now he hath offered me his heart and hand why should i not accept them norna that heart is filled with dark and evil passions and that hand is stained with blood ay lady well mayest thou start i will tell thee more the splendid home he would lead thee to is darkened by a fearful crime and his fair palace haunted by the spirit of a murdered wife lenore starts up wife sayest thou he told me he was never wed mysterious woman tell me more how dost thou know tis true and wherefore was it done i have a right to know oh speak and tell me all for that have i come hither he hath been wed to a lady young and lovely as thyself he kept her prisoner in his splendid home and by neglect and cruelty he broke as warm and true a heart as ever beat in woman's breast her brother stole unseen to cheer and comfort her and this aroused her lord's suspicions and he bid her to confess who was her unknown friend she would not yield her brother to his hate and he in his wild anger murdered her i heard his cruel words her prayers for mercy and i stood beside the lifeless form and marked the blow his evil hand had given her and there i vowed i would avenge the deed and for this have i come hither to warn thee of thy danger he loves thee only for thy wealth and when thou art his will wrong thee as he hath the meek teresa how shall i ever thank thee for this escape from sorrow and despair i did not love him but i am alone and his kind words were sweet and tender i thought with him i might be happy yet but ah how little did i dream of sin like this thank heaven tis not too late how wilt thou answer lord rodolpho now i will answer him with all the scorn and loathing that i feel 
I fear him not, and he shall learn how his false vows are despised, and his sins made known. Tis well, but stay, be thou not too proud. Speak fairly, and reject him courteously, for he will stop at naught in his revenge if thou but rouse his hatred. And now, farewell. I'll watch above thee, and in thy hour of danger old Norna will be nigh. Stay, give me some token by which thou wilt know the messenger I may find cause to send thee. The fierce Count will seek to win thee, and repay thy scorn by all the evil his cruel heart can bring. Take this ring, and I will trust whoever thou mayest send with it. I owe thee much, and believe me, I am grateful for thy care, and will repay thee by my confidence and truth. Farewell, old Norna. Watch thou above the helpless, and thine old age shall be made happy by my care. Heaven bless thee, gentle lady. Good angels guard thee. Norna will not forget. Exit, Norna. Tis like a dream, so strange, so terrible. He whom I thought so gentle and so true is stained with fearful crimes. Poor murdered lady! Have I escaped a fate like thine? Ah, I hear a step. Now heart be firm, and he shall enter here no more. Enter Rodolfo. Sweet lady, I am here to learn my fate. I have told my love, and thou hast listened. I have asked thy hand, and thou hast not refused it. I have offered all that I possess, my home, my heart. Again I lay them at thy feet, beloved Leonore. Oh, wilt thou but accept them, poor though they be, and in return let me but claim this fair hand as mine own? Takes her hand and kneels before her. Lenore withdrawing her hand. My lord, forgive me, but I cannot grant it. When last we met, thou didst bid me ask my heart if it could love thee. It hath answered, Nay. I grieve I cannot make a fit return for all you offer, but I have no love to give, and without it this poor hand were worthless. There are others far more fit to grace thy home than I. Go, win thyself a loving bride, and so forget Leonore. What has changed thee thus since last we met? Then wert thou kind, and listened gladly to my love. Now there is a scornful smile upon thy lips, and a proud light in thine eye. What means this? Why dost thou look so coldly on me, Leonore? Who has whispered false tales in thine ear? Believe them not, I am as true as heaven to thee. Then do not cast away the heart so truly thine. Smile on me, dearest. Thou art my first, last. Only love. Tis false, my lord, hast thou so soon forgot, Teresa? What? Who told thee that accursed tale? What dost thou mean, Leonore? I mean thy sinful deeds are known. Thou hast asked me why I will not wed thee, and I answer, I will not give my hand unto a murderer. Murderer! No more of this. Thy tale is false. Forget it, and I will forgive the idle words. Now listen, I came hither to receive thy answer to my suit. Think, ere thou decide. Thou art an orphan, unprotected and alone. I am powerful and great. Wilt thou take my love, and with it honour, wealth, happiness, and ease? Or my hate, which will surely follow thee, and bring down desolation on thee, and all thou lovest? Now choose my hatred, or my love. My lord, I scorn thy love, and I defy thy hate. Work thy will, I fear thee not. I am not so unprotected as thou thinkest. There are unseen friends around me who will save in every peril, and who are sworn to take revenge on thee for thy great sins. This is my answer. Henceforth we are strangers. Now leave me, I would be alone. Not yet, proud lady. If thou wilt not love, I'll make thee learn to fear the heart thou hast so scornfully cast away. Let thy friends guard thee well. Thou wilt need their care when I begin my work of vengeance. Thou mayest smile, but thou shalt rue the day when Count Rodolfo asked and was refused. But I will yet win thee, and then beware, and when thou dost pray for mercy on thy knees, remember the haughty words that thou hast this day spoken. Do thy worst, murderer. Spirits will watch above me, and thou canst not harm. Adieu, my lord. Exit Lenore. Foiled again. Some demon works against me. Who could have told her of Teresa? A little longer, and I should have won a rich young bride, 
and now this tale of murder mars it all but i will win her yet and wring her proud heart till she shall bend her haughty head and sue for mercy how shall it be done stay ha ah, i see a way the letter louis would have sent her ere he died she knows not of his death and i will send this paper bidding her to meet her lover in the forest she cannot doubt the lines his own hand traced she will obey and i'll be there to lead her to my castle i'll wed her and she may scorn weep and pray in vain ha ha proud leonora spite of thy guardian spirits thou shalt be mine and then for my revenge exit rodolpho curtain scene seventh lenore's room enter lenore with a letter tis strange an unknown page thrust this into my hand while kneeling in the chapel ah surely i should know this hand tis lewis's and at last he hath returned and still remembers leonore opens letter and reads dearest lady i am banished from the land by count rodolpho's false tales to the king and thus i dare not venture near thee but by the love my lips have never told i do conjure thee to bestow one last look last word on him whose cruel fate it is to leave all that he most fondly loves if thou wilt grant this prayer meet me at twilight in the glen beside old norna's cave she will be there to guard thee dearest leonore before we part perchance for ever grant this last boon to one who in banishment and grief and peril is for ever thy devoted lewis he loves me and mid danger still remembers ah lewis there is nothing thou canst ask i will not gladly grant i'll go the sun is well nigh set and i can steal away unseen to whisper hope and comfort ere we part for ever now count rodolpho thou hast given me another cause for hate Louis, I can love thee, though thou art banished and afar. Hark, tis the vesper bell. Now courage, heart, and thou shalt mourn no longer. Exit Lenore. Curtain. End of section two.